Hello Tubesters, back again, yes, uh, it's another update, and I can't even remember which one now, so we'll just call it an update on the Tamiya 1 in 35 scale SAS Pink Panther. Uh, it's been going really well actually, so as I'm looking at it in front of me at the moment, I should be looking at you. It's been going really well, I've got all the painting done apart from little bits which I'll point out in a minute uh, but they are you know little tiny bits uh, I've made the stowage not all the stowage some of it I've actually um, a Tamiya uh, stowage uh, and some I've made out of, of potty and bits and pieces uh, but it's just to make it a bit more lived in I didn't want the complete back deck just full of Bergens and that's backpacks uh, Bergens and webbing and you know I don't know uh, because you know the guys still had to fight out of it at the end of the day there's a general purpose machine gun in the back and uh, you know it's not just going to be fired from the, the seated position though the guy's going to have to swing it around so he's going to have to be standing on the back and in the back and all that stuff so um, I didn't want to completely fill the back uh, tub out of with stowage but at the same time put a fair bit of stowage in there to show that obviously they're living out of the out of the vehicle for long periods of time uh, there's a couple of things uh, I've still got to do uh, construction wise it's nothing it's just bits I've got to add on uh, I'm still debating how I'll go about that and I'll show you in a second but no I'm I'm uh, I'm really pleased it's it, if I could have done a bit better with it and, and then this isn't me just knocking me I'm just saying in the hands of uh, you know a proficient kit builder, somebody's been doing it a while, you could get even more out of this kit. It really is. Uh, it's a nice, compact little thing. It's not huge, being a Land Rover. Uh, it's not like a Hummer or a Humvee, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you know, it's uh, and it's not like the later on, you know, things that we've got now, which I can't even remember the names of at the moment. But it's just a nice little kit. And as I said to you guys, there's lots of sink marks in it. Uh, it's an old, it's an old, really old kit, you know. So there's lots of sink marks in it. Uh, but on the whole, the majority of them are underneath, and there is a lot. <laughs> but they're never going to be seen, you know. It, there's a couple on the back body, uh, and by the time the stowage is, is is on there, you won't see those. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, you know, any anybody that wants to have a go on. You know, a cheap kit. I mean, this was, I think you can pick this up in the UK for about £11. This was gifted to me by Mr. and Mrs. Beetle. And I keep saying that just because, you know, it was really kind of them. Uh, they know I'd owned Land Rovers before, so they, you know, and they like, I like military stuff, so they sent me this. So uh, I can't thank them enough for that. Uh, as I said to you guys before, they also sent me a full etch kit. I didn't use a lot of it, I was struggling with it. Not not struggling in the bending, I've got my little photo bender, £17, <laughs> bargain. Uh, I, I, can, I can bend majority of the bits and pieces fine. Uh, it was just a fact I struggled with the larger box type shapes uh, to actually uh, get them to look tidy. They look all gappy and I've got to even you know, to try and fill that up and even then I don't think it, it looked particularly great. I think the option to go with there is solder. And it's just something again. I've got a, a red, really large soldering iron that I've used about five times, and I haven't used that for about twelve years. Uh, it's it's way over scale for for anything doing to do with this, but uh, it's something I should probably look at getting uh, if I use any any photo etch. It's going to you know make where you've got to make boxes or you know that type of shape. Just simple, obviously folding bits and pieces isn't too bad. But even I, I even find, and I must admit, I didn't really remember to heat this stuff up. I'm told if you heat it up, I should know really, but annealing it, make it softer. Uh, I've got to put a couple of straps on the jerry cans. So I was going to wait to actually show you that, but uh, I believe in that kit there is straps on the jerry cans. I don't really want to do it now. I should have maybe tried it. I was, I was just getting a bit fed up with not being able to get, even, even getting the straps on things I tend to find they're still quite gappy underneath you know um, and I just think in, in that case a, a piece of maybe masking tape would probably be better because it would stick to the thing you know um, paint well paint it first maybe stick it I'm not 100% sure but yeah uh, I'm, I'm 
the only thing is then the buckle. Uh, so I'm, I've got buckles in the photo etch. I've got I've got plaster card ideas. So the both the jerry cans need a strap going around them uh, to 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 make them look at that tad more authentic. I suppose you could say. Uh, but uh, so at the moment we've got stowage that's being primed and is ready to be painted probably tonight. Uh, there's a couple of little things like the ammo boxes still need to be worked on on the uh, there's one that the, the ammo box is flipped open and you can see the the rounds so that belt of rounds has got to be painted uh, you know just a couple of tiny little bits and pieces oh the lights I haven't done any of the lights yet I was gonna I wondered whether to paint them I'm gonna try one as a trial first I've got some ink so I'm gonna I was gonna I haven't got any clear paint so but I have got ink so I thought of putting the ink on uh, on, I'll try them on the pink first because they've been oversprayed pink uh, and if that doesn't work I might paint them silver and then uh, put the ink over the top um, so th that's got to be done as well uh, and then as I said once it's all done I will put some pigments on uh, you know just to to actually uh, I, I don't want it overly dusty um, I, I do, but uh, obviously there's going to be dust accumulations in different parts so Let's go down to the bench, now I've talked all the way through it, and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at this, this Pink Panther. Alright guys, thanks for joining me at the bench. Just tentatively hold on to one of the legs of this, of this uh, tripod in case the whole thing tips over onto the model itself, and that wouldn't be good. Uh, yeah, it's uh, again the lights, different lights, it'll give the pink a different look. Uh, you'll, when I finally get round to doing the photographs, you'll see it's, it's more like a like a purpley pink almost because it's got the green background and I've not gone and I wanted to keep it purposely uh, with a green half showing through if that makes sense so it's uh, some of the photographs I've seen of Pink Panthers uh, the, the couple of colour photographs I've seen they appear to have that look on them uh, I've seen others that have been done up by enthusiasts that are more completely just pink um, some have got the overspray on the wheels and in the photograph I've seen the overspray now the overspray could just be for quickness or it might have, they might have done it for camouflage, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but uh, the, a couple of the authentic photographs I've seen, uh, they have got overspray on them. Uh, but I've seen uh, reenactor ones that, well not, you know, but restored ones that, that haven't, so you just take your pick really. And also don't forget, although this is a Pink Panther, if you think outside the box, the SAS use these um, in Europe in the Cold War obviously they'd be deploying ahead or behind enemy lines and uh, these would be used um, in, a, in a you know green and black version so if you wanted to do something a bit different you could do that uh, I did think of different policy po propos uh, get me words out of me I did think of other things maybe using without all the smoke grenade launchers and things uh, using for like Rhodesia but you've got all these extra tanks and stuff and I, I don't think they'd have those so you'd probably have to get yourself a general purpose uh, Land Rover and just add a couple of jimpies on um, and uh, the recce platoons in the normal uh, infantry regiments uh, we had 110 versions so the later versions of this uh, and they both you know they usually mounted a couple of jimpies as well uh, but I don't think I'm, I'm not a hundred percent but I don't remember any tanks on them or anything like that so uh, you're a bit constricted, but you could easily do a green and black one for the European Theatre of Operations. Right, uh, let's. What else? We've got early Jimpies because it was in the mid 60s, early mid 60s. So they've still got the wooden stocks and the wooden, sorry, wooden stocks, wooden butts, and uh, the SLRs are wooden as well, uh, but and they have a wooden stock as well uh, before they did the black plastic. Uh, these carrying handles on a GPMG would normally be pushed over so they wouldn't be up in the air like that really that's that is in the carrying position um, so uh, I've tried to show when you do these jimpies they have an aluminium feed tray and uh, I've tried to show that there so again the lights with this type of vehicle unfortunately the lights tend to bleach out a lot of the <laughs> weathering and, and staining that I've done uh, I've done oil painting on the, I gave the seats a acrylic paint and then, let me see if I can talk this up, 
and then went over them with the oil paints. I have done the same. I've given the brownie, bronzy look, green, brown, bronze, green, I don't know what you call it uh, for British um, ammo boxes. So uh, they're not the green. The, the radio still got to have work done to it. Um, I've just given that a, I think that was olive grey. Uh, again, I've tried to stain chip, so we've got green chips coming through with. This is, I think I've showed this before, a wooden plank that's been braced, put on there as a bracing for the, for the rest of the bits and pieces. And uh, that's got wood showing through, but I wanted to give it less grey look, more of a fairly clean look. else that you don't know about obviously we've got pink where she's been over sprayed but obviously the driver's been handling it and all the the uh, the metal steering wheel because it was a metal one I believe on these early ones well mine was anyway uh, again I want to put a strap on here um, it'll need a buckle of some description just there so there'll be a strap more than likely going to be um, some sort you know Tamiya masking tape or something over the top of that now, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, the the lights. I've I've had to paint the lights silver, or an off silver. Um, I'm going to probably put a bit of pigments over them just to try and. I don't like painting them silver, but I didn't really. There wasn't any clear plastic in in there. It's an old kit. I've just got to tart up the number plate a bit, just where I've gone over with the this that um, silver grey paint bit of yellow as I say this is normally will have the weight of the vehicle on for going over military bridges um, and it's usually yellow disc so I've got a bit of yellow showing through there uh, I didn't do very good on the on the file I can tip it up but there's a photo etch I've, I removed the plastic piece and put photo etch and it's that should really be sitting up slightly higher at a slightly higher angle uh, I've had to put a pin in there to lock it off I mean it would have had a locking pin of some description anyway but I've got, let's have a look, go back out a bit. You can't see, there's a lot of staining on the vehicle, like on the sand ladders and that, that you can't see. Um, I'll just show you these while they're... These guys are going to be 51mm mortar tubes. I'm just keeping them simple. Uh, so the cocktail sticks stuck together. Uh, I'll paint the end caps on. Uh, there's a couple of strengthening uh, pieces, wire pieces that hold up the three tubes together. And there's normally a, a little webbing handle that goes on. Uh, sometimes there's actually a, a sling as well, uh, also to carry on. But these are for the, in those days, would still be, I think, the two inch mortar. Uh, we then use the 51 inch mortar, and I think it's actually gone up slightly, maybe even. To what we used and that's the platoon weapon uh, for laying uh, uh, it can fire explosives but it, it's it's not particularly great at, you know um, unless you're maybe in a built-up area where you're chucking them over walls and that but um, it, it was in my day it was used mainly for illumination than anything because we were trained mostly to fight at night uh, so 51 other in this case a two inch mortar tended to fire illumination more than anything and I would have thought the SAS would have done the same thing if they were ambushed at night or putting an ambush in. Um, so yeah, that's going to be painted cardboard because it was like a treated cardboard tubes uh, with some, I believe, metal end caps, if I'm thinking right, uh, painted like in a grey colour from the pictures I've seen and a, uh, and a hat carrying handle. So I've got a couple of those to put on. I've got my... I've got my towing uh, rope. <laughs> I think it's going to be a rope rather than a wire. It's a right mess. I put a little uh, D shackle I made out of some turned wire, uh, and that's going to sit in the in the bowl of the the in the bowl of the spare wheel there with the shackle just hanging over the side. I did try and get it. I'd seen some of the vehicles where they'd been gone. They'd gone down to the to the uh, D shaped holder at the bottom there, but. I just couldn't get the wire to, to conform properly and I was I was worried I was going to start chipping bits off the paint so I'm just having a sat in the in the spare wheel there. And what else we've got? We've got uh, this one is going to be, this is all lead wire and it's going to be 
uh, wire for the uh, the searchlight on this side, which can obviously be taken off. I've seen on the on the replica versions or the you know restored versions that they, they that obviously can they can stand up with it and just point it where they want. So it has to have a fair bit of wire. So that's going to go on there. Uh, this is just going to be some rope. Uh, just to, again, most most vehicles have some form of rope for stringing up bashers or you know you name it. I've got a huge great big tarp that I've just made out of a sticker sticker putty. And uh, Greg did send me some some of the others, but I thought this would conform a bit sit a bit better. Uh, these straps may be used, or I might actually just put some Tamiya tape over them again. I'm not 100% sure yet. I put a couple of dings in there. Um, but that can be said to be anything really, and that's going to sit. That's going to sit along the sand rack there, sand channel, whatever you want to call it. So there's that. Is there anything else that I've made myself? Oh, a couple more bits. This is this is the fifty. This I keep sorry because we used to use the fifty-one millimeter mortar, the two-inch mortar. Uh, that's it's carrying uh, just a webbing carrying case uh, that the fifty-one, uh, the two-inch mortar sits in, and I put a bit of plastic card there to try and look like straps. So that's that. And the only other piece, I've got some communications wire here for the field for the radio stroke field telephone. It's wrapped up in a in a bundle, uh, and uh, obviously can just be fed out the top. Um, these this wire that I've bent really should be. Um, uh, I'm painting it as as uh, straps rather than wire, but uh, it does the job. Uh, this is actually a nut that I've coated in in. In uh, no, sorry, the heads, my heads, I'm having problems with my head at the moment. Uh, the, it's coated in putty, and I'm hoping that the I did think of putting wire in the middle, but the actual thread, if you can, if you when it's painted black, you probably won't see it, but the thread will replicate the wire going round. So that's what I've done. I've I've, I've put that round as a as a canvas canvas holder for the uh, wire. And what you normally do with that. Is if you're in a larger position, or if you're, um, uh, you know, you can hook up different vehicles without using the actual main uh, comms. You can uh, hook field telephones up or headsets up uh, to your to the, this wire here, and uh, you can, you know, you might be, you might put a an Overwatch position up on a sand dune in this case, or actually in Oman they were fighting a lot of t times. They were fighting these rebels up in the up in the mountains and that, so it, it could well be. You know, in in rocky positions, but anyway, you you know, you 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 can lay this out, and um, you can just be. You can even even if you don't, if you're that close, you can just click the field uh, field telephone, as I call it, but the field the handpiece, uh, and just click uh, if you with a pre -des pre designated signal. So yeah, that's uh, you'll see these as well on the back of uh, tanks, main battle tanks. Uh, it's actually, if you don't know what it is, it is it is wire, and what it does is the tanks can link up themselves with this wire, and uh, it's it's often a safer form of communication. Um, so if you're on sentry, you can tell each other what's happening. So anyway, that's that. <laughs> All that for a grey piece, <laughs> a grey nut covered in uh, in uh, sculpt. Right, let's see what else. Now these are all Tamiya stuff, so we'll be brisk, and brisk with this. Now what reason I'm thinking, well Gav, uh, they were using 58 pattern webbing in those days. Uh, the main regular units were, but the SAS tended to use their own uh, Bergens, as in privately bought, uh, for, and, and a lot of a lot of was favoured by like the, the Norwegian army, which gave us our word Bergens. Uh, that we we used at a later date, but they used a lot uh, of mountaineering type Bergens. Let's put it that way. So rather than a square pack that the British Army was still supplying its blokes, uh, they used their own like more or less mountaineering Norwegian German uh, style type type uh, Bergens backpacks. So I've gone with that because I'm thinking, well, I can stretch that to. A, I did try making a few, and they just weren't coming out particularly believable. So. Uh, that's what I've gone with 
you know, take it or leave it. I know it's not exactly authentic, but on the Bergens I've seen uh, for the period, uh, on especially on reenactor vehicles, um, they often they often bear resemblance to these type of things with the pouches at the front. So yeah, I've got three uh, three of those for the crew: one larger one and two smaller ones, just to break it up. Uh, we've again sleeping bag. Uh, this is a modern one obviously and these straps here compress when you put your sleeping bag in if you've never used one uh, you compress this is an American one but the the British modern British one was still well when I was in 20 years 20 25 years ago was uh, the same you pull on the straps it condenses it as, as much as possible to fit inside your Bergen but at the time the British Army had because uh, I used them as a junior they had the old green slug where it was a uh, you actually folded the, the, that. That's a case that the the, the uh, sleeping bag goes in. But the 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 old British Army one, it was a waxed waterproof outer, and it just rolled up. If I remember rightly, we're going back a long time now. And I would have thought they would have had the same, unless again the SAS went out and pr purchased their own. So. I don't know. It's the best I could come up with for just to say there was some other different type of storage in there. Uh, so I've gone with the, you know, it's roughly a green slug. Uh, normally it would be actually a shiny green because I say it's like a wax material. Uh, but um, I shall just paint it probably a, a you know, a duller colour, and it's in there amongst the storage. And then we've just got one ammo box. I just thought to put an extra ammo box in the back just to again. I don't want to do much more to it than that. Uh, you could put some water bottles. If, if I'd have had some water bottles, I'd have put those, you know, a couple of... And I'm not on about the clear Avion ones that uh, Meng and all that, and I've got a collection of. Uh, it, it was actually like canteens, you know. Um, the the They used the metal, the metal American canteens. Uh, the British Army tended to have a, a black... NBC one and it any any lads or lasses will tell you it's disgusting drinking out of it I don't know what the plastic does to the water, but it always makes it taste crap <laughs> rubbish even uh, So, so uh, again pictures I've seen they actually had American um, metal ones uh, And I did if I'd had those spare I would have I would have chucked a couple in and you know I did think maybe I'd get Put in a couple of maps, shrink. I can't shrink them. I'm not good enough to know how to use a computer, but try and get my wife to shrink me a couple of maps down or something to put on there as well, and that might well happen. So I think that's everything. As I say, tonight I'm going to have a go at uh, you know whether I get all this stuff painted in one night is debatable, but I will have a go at painting that stowage tonight. Once all the the stowage is painted, it'll all be stuck in, and then. Uh, it really is then just waiting for for a tiny base to be done for it, which uh, it will have. I've got some some material for it. Uh, the only thing I'd probably would like to have done, I've just got to see if I can carve up some blue foam. What I did want was, um, oh, you know, you know the uh, rubberized molds from Woodland Scenics for rocks. I did want some of those, uh, but funds are short at the moment until I, until I get this commissioned. Um, off to the customer, which won't be for another week or so yet, because I've got to do some Harry Potter figures for him. Uh, once that's... Uh, uh, so I did want to do a couple of those, like uh, those type of rocks, and build them up very slightly, because I also wanted to use the base for this as a test base for the uh, mounted First World War figure that I showed off uh, a few months back. So it was, all, it was also going to be a test base for that. So... Um, this will get as far as it will get uh, until I can get those those uh, those rocks. I will try. I mean, I'll try cutting up some blue foam and seeing how it looks, uh, how naturally it looks when it's painted up. And if it works, it great. I'll, you know, I won't have to get any. But uh, if not, I'll 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 wait. I'll hang on until I get some of this uh, this plastic cast rock stuff, or that I can make myself and. Uh, and we'll we'll finally get a base. So it could be a case like the tie ring. You see it right up to that point, and then you have to wait. Uh, all my materials, have, other materials, have come in by the way. So the tie ring build, I'm just going through in my head now what uh, what I want to do uh, on the tiny diorama for that as well, because these dioramas get, <laughs> get shrinks tighter and tighter as I 
as I try and uh, condense them a bit and start going, because you know me, I go off down that wild road of, oh, we'll do this and do that, you know, and I'm building a cityscape by the time I'm finished. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to condense it so it actually, uh, it isn't so much of a handful uh, for me, because I haven't got the space for, for huge dioramas like Greg does, and I haven't um, got the even the finances to keep funding huge dioramas, you know. Again, you know, yeah, you can use a lot of scrap materials, but there's still materials that that, that still cost you a bit. So uh, um, I'm just trying to <laughs> just trying to keep keep. I've got the aspirations, but uh, but not the uh, the backing behind it. So uh, like this one, this one will be on it as I say, just to prove what it is. It, it'll be obviously slightly bigger than this lid here, but it won't be that much bigger, uh, and it, it, it will. Um, it will just put some context for the vehicle. That's what I'm trying to find. That's the word I'm trying to find. So, guys, thank you very much for your patience. Yes, another 20-minute video. This is just to tell you a small amount of progress. But I enjoy doing them. So, so guys, thank you very much for your patience and stopping by and taking a look. Uh, we'll have another proper Tiger update. Um, oh, let me see. Uh, I'll probably be working on the Tiger at some stage over the weekend. Uh, we're now on to uh, the, I'm building the uh, the gun up at the back at the moment. The breach is the word I was after. That's another technical word. The gun at the back, <laughs> the, the breach. Uh, it actually has a, a breach mechanism and all that. Um, so although you probably won't see, it, I've decided on what I'm going to build it anyway. So uh, that's all getting built, and. Um, you know, and then it's just keep working on the turret. But uh, we'll have a, we'll have an update on on that very soon. Uh, I've got some, as I say, the eighteen mil cavalry, uh, Austro Hungarian uh, Napoleonic cavalry. They're done, uh, and you will get a video on them probably the weekend uh, or Monday. I'm not hundred percent sure yet. Uh, so I've got some Harry Potters. Oh, you'll all, you'll I know you'll all be queuing up for those. Uh, let me see what else. Um, got some 18 mil Highlanders, uh, small batch of 18 mil Highlanders. I'm painting as a new commission, starting next week. But you probably won't see those till a week or probably about a week or so away. And now this main commission's out of the way, I can go back to those 28 mil Highlanders, <laughs> which I've painted two, and I've got uh, two only just started and I've got four red coats that have, have had a base coat on them as well so but I haven't painted those for probably about 10 days so they can be uh, cracked on with and next week I'm hoping to reserve a, a half a day or, or probably because I'm painting with oils but I'm going to have a go at that Dragoon bust uh, although saying that I've actually got to start it with acrylics actually so um, I'll probably start painting that under a camera as well um, but I'll, I'll condense it all into one video, so you might not see that actually for a couple of weeks. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Right, finished. No more waffle. Uh, you won't get a video tomorrow. Yes, heave a sigh of relief. It's time to somebody for somebody else to step up to the plate. <laughs> Come on, get some entertainment on. Uh, but you will get a video at some stage, maybe Sunday or Monday. Look after yourselves. Uh, again, I thank you all for your support. It, it really means a lot, uh, and I mean, mean that. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just keep doing what you're doing, and we'll catch each other very, very soon on another video.